Hello, and welcome to my first episode of the main series. In this episode, I'm going to explain how I'm going to do these walkthroughs. It's going to be a basically a, a every chest, every skill book, and every location marked, unmarked, every quest marked, unmarked, and they're all going to be sorted into neat little playlists based on location. Or, if applicable, they'll be sorted by the faction and quest line, like Thieves Guild or Dark Brotherhood or Main. Now, I'm going to go with my preferred character type here. I'm going to go with a thief specializing in daggers. Sometimes dual wielding, sometimes shield. But, for the most part, I don't expect to actually be in much combat, because everything's going to be dead the second I touch it. Now, I will be leveling up on camera, so you can go ahead and follow my character's progression as I play this game, and do walkthroughs and stuff. But I don't expect any copycats out there, because because an inflex inflexible character isn't a very survivable one. I don't expect to follow one exact path the whole way through. Now, I prefer to edit out my loading screens, because, frankly, they add on up to two minutes of the total film, and I don't feel that this walkthrough would be very good if there were two minutes here in, in every episode of you sitting there and staring at a blank screen. Now I also felt that I could talk over this section of gameplay because everybody who's ever played Skyrim probably only shares this particular content in common because I know there's some guys who have an advanced storyline past Unbound. Now, I've played through this game three times as a full character, got all the way through, and felt that I'd done as, enough, as much as I cared to do in the game. Three times, three different playstyles. One was a two-handed heavy armor warrior, one was a heavy armor sniper, yeah, that works, and one as a mage. So, I kind of know what I'm doing, and as I go through this walkthrough, this series, you'll often hear me say, if you're a mage, you should stand there and do this. If you're a thief, you should sneak around that path. And if you're a warrior, you stand here and take them. And you can expect me to be usually pretty good about that stuff. Now, we're also going to be dealing with general geography of the hold. For instance, um, East March. I'm going to tell you the boundaries between that, the Pale Winter Hold Hold, and Rift, the Rift. And I'm going to be telling you about all the vendors and giving you basically the city layout, and then the hold layout, and telling you everything you ever needed to know, or didn't realize that was available, about Skyrim and geography. I've also got a very particular list of items I'm going to get very early in this character's career. For instance, the Black Star, the Dagger Bloodthorn, and the Shrouded armor, and most particularly the shrouded gauntlets, or gloves, or whatever, whichever that is. That'll give us unlimited souls, and double sneak attack damage. And after that, we're just going to be walking through dungeons, basically, and slitting everything's throats, and stealing souls. And that dagger Bloodthorn absorbs 10 health, and casts Soul Trap for about 3 seconds on the target. So, it's probably the most overpowered thing, especially because... You can guarantee that it's going to be there. However, its main drawback is that it's only got like 15 uses in it. So, the Black Star is going to be a very important part of this game. Alright, and I believe I have covered all the topics that I'm going to cover along this cart ride. I'll be turning the game sound back on shortly, and please enjoy the walkthrough of the first quest in Skyrim, Unbound. Alright, now, if you want to save yourself the 5 minute cart ride when you are starting a new character, you can load save zero, which should be from this point right here where Yarl Ulfric is being called up to the block.
Who are you? My name is the honorable and just and astonishingly good-looking Sir Wallace com Total Completion Walk Through the Quadrillion Esquire. However, as soon as we get through this silly... Wait, X is done. We are going to be known as Wally Walkthrough. You're a long way from the Imperial City. What are you doing in Skyrim? Captain, what should we do? He's not on the list. Forget the list. He goes to the block. By your orders, Captain. I'm sorry. We'll make sure you remain so return to Civadil. Ah, small comfort Follow that. Captain, prisoner. Now, I understand that Justice is the first victim in a civil war, but... This just leaves a really sour taste in my mouth. It's the reason my first character went with the uh, Stormcloaks. All the other characters I've done have Alfred gone with Stormcloak. the Imperials because I just find them hero, to be in the right for most of the conflict. Like Ulfric over there is kind of power grabby. You started this war, plunged Skyrim into chaos, and now the Empire is going to put you down and restore the peace. What was that? It's nothing. Carry on. Yes, General Tullius. Give them their last rites. As we commend your souls to Aetherius, blessings of the eight divines upon you. For the love of Talos, shut up and let's get this over. Our... As you wish. Come on! I haven't got all morning. Interestingly, if he hadn't been so eager to die and let that priest finish her benediction, she might have delayed long enough for that dragon to come in and same. disrupt the execution. As fearless in death as he was in life. Next, the renegade so, the weakest part of this game is the way that crowds shout things out, like, there? there it is I think that they would, you that? if this were reality, they would have been I shouting said, over each other instead of patiently prisoner. waiting to for the their lines prisoner. to be put in. Nice and easy. But, it's a video game, and probably one of the best ones I've ever played. It's important to note that there isn't much Alduin does that can actually damage you in this section of gameplay. I don't think anyone's ever died because the dragon hit them, so feel free to stand in front of his fire blast. Alright, come on, give me control. Alright, now, the door that you need to go through is right over here. It might be very disorienting if you're not sure what to do at this point because they made sure to blur your vision. Legends don't burn down villages. We need to move now. And now we will demonstrate that dragon fire does no damage. See, no damage. Took more fall damage than dragon damage. All right. It's amazing how quickly the town started burning and turning to rubble. And it's also amazing how bad a shot that dragon is. Come on, Alduin. You can do better. When a video game tries to be a movie, but it keep, lets the player keep control, it gets kind of silly. 
Oh, let's go have our... Alright, so pretty quick here, we're going to be given a choice between the Imperials and Stormcloaks, Hadvar or Raylof. Hadvar, the Imperial, is going to go through the left door, and Raylof is going to go through the right door. The main difference between them is there'll be a small storyline difference as you progress through the Civil War quest line. Quick cooking me. And see, the dragon's always careful to leave you at about half health. It's you and me, prisoner. Stay close. So, the one real difference between those two that I've seen is that the Imperials only give you access to light armor here, and the Stormcloaks only give you access, will give you access to both kinds, light and heavy armor. Got that guy. Curse splat. Okay. Now we're going to go with the Imperials because I just prefer them. And they also give a slightly better light armor than the Stormcloaks do. Looks like we're the only Another thing to note, if you will go with the Stormcloaks, it becomes slightly difficult times. to find two-handed weapons. We should keep moving. Now, Come here. I would Let not worry about any of the hostiles in this dungeon. And Hadvar or Raylop, if you there pick you him, go. is going to get look the around. majority of the kills, of yet no yet matter how it from. plays out. I'm going to see if I can find something. For That's these because brood. his damage is nuts. All right, if you go with the Imperials, it's important to loot this chest for the helmet, and the chest that's marked for the boots, cuirass, and a sword. If you go with the storm cloaks, then this room and all the loot in it is available through the That's door that the Imperial Captain and there. Escort go through. And there is another sword on the weapons rack, in case you prefer to go two-handed. Now, you don't really get much by going with one-handed at this point, with just one hand sword, because the blocking ability of one sword is negligible, especially against the heavy weapons you're seeing here. Oh yes. First, a small tutorial in two-handed weapons. That's right hand, left hand, about the same. However, you can do this, both hands at the same time, and both, um, a double power attack does this huge multi-hit thing. Also, your left-handed power attack is a very quick stab. And so, Hold that's up. pretty much the difference we between all of them. This particular dungeon is not built for sneaking. Now you see, I'm not doing very much damage to them, but they aren't Let doing very much damage to me. I was the sole focus of their attention for a fair amount of time. It's also good to note that the Imperials don't give you gloves, so you should probably take them from the Stormcloaks just to get that little extra um, damage reduction. The female Stormcloak also had a hide shield on her, so if you're the one kind, the guy who likes light shields, go for it. I'm gonna try to see if I can make dual wielding work. Now. A note on armor level ups. The system is it is hear something. How many how much damage you take multiplied by how many pieces of the appropriate armor you wear. So let's say you're just wearing a helmet. That is only one piece of light armor that's absorbing the damage. But if you are wearing a helmet, a shield, a curious, gloves, and boots that's a lot more pieces to absorb damage, and your skill will level up much faster from the same damage taken. There's potions over here. Wines. Alcohol's useless in this game. Also worth noting, you should probably grab all the salt piles you can get, because they are rare cooking ingredients, and oddly, there are some very useful recipes in this game. Um, the most useful one, however, is Elsewhere Fondue, which is basically a scaled-down version of High Elven Highborn. Done, then. This you won't take us alive. Ooh. 
Dual wielding isn't working for me, so I'm gonna go with this person's shield here. You fellows happened along just in time. These boys seemed a bit upset at how I And you get the first daggers, which I'm going to begin using Don't immediately. You? Also the Book of the Dragonborn, Dragon which is kinda out. handy for getting your bearings on what's going on here. Alright, let's get these daggers a dragon. Please, don't make and there's noise. another dagger in here if you're the light dual wielding kind. Also a mace and this iron shield. Some odd noises coming from They're giving you all the tools to set up your character here. Except for, of course, the actual heavy armor. Didn't you hear me? Let's see, double that. I'm set up sort of my inventory here. They keep this under attack. There we go, double dagger. Now, let's get this marked too, because I'm going to be switching between double handed daggers and my. Alright, lock picking tutorials are very hard to explain. So, what you have to do is you have to test every location of the pick and see how far you can make the lock turn. If the lock begins to wiggle and vibrate, then you need to pull, let off and try a different position. The further you can get in, the better it is and the closer you are to unlocking the lock. Now if you want to specialize in lock picking, go right ahead and pick every single one of these locks in the room, and there's more locks down the hall, so I prefer to save my lock picks for when I actually need them. However, that may bite me in the butt later because, well, also important is to loot everything. Gold and arrows are going to be very tight at the beginning, especially if you're an archer and you use lots of arrows. Down here is the part where they introduce archery. It's going to be a cavern that's basically a U-shape with elevated walkways Where's and a U-shape. And on the other side, there are going to be archers. Now, as with all the people in this dungeon, their damage is going to be nerfed and their health is going to be nuts. So, assuming that the normal long normal sword and maces and war axes are the standard reach, daggers have 40% less reach than the those and two-handed have 40% more reach than those and you can use that to your advantage to melee combat also whenever you see these pools here it is a bio option to light them up with any sort of fire full combat here going The reason why I'd like to carry two daggers is because if I happen to get a sneak attack in with the double strike move, then that'll be twice as much damage. However, I don't prefer to fight that way because it's just a hassle to get all these. It's a personal preference. If I'm going with one handed, I'm probably going to keep a shield because that's how I got used to it. It's also worth noting that the more armor you're wearing, the slower you go. Um, some people I've talked to will swear that using a light shield totally messes up their gameplay because they need to move around faster than that. But I don't see that much difference between shield and no shield. No, I do see a difference when there's a heavy shield. It's also important to get the loot that's over here. There's a potion and a coin purse and a skeleton. And this way, once the quest is complete and you waited about a week in game, the bandits will move into Helgen and that will be the way, the new way through the dungeon. Loot everything. Alright, we're coming up on spiders, and the only reason I've seen for this spider area 
is to give you a crap ton of poison that you can use. And you see that, saw that trick there I did with the jumping? Um, the jump will count as one footstep, whereas the normal movement will count as several footsteps. So, if you have shadows and you need to approach quickly, but you don't have the um, ability to sneak quietly, then you can jump. However, it's... It's tricky. What next, giant snakes? Nothing much in this cavern except for these spider eggs, which are alchemical ingredients of minimal use, and these frostbite spiders, which have fr one frostbite venom each. Except for the big ones, might have two. Now the frostbite venom is particularly potent early in the game. Like, up to level 10, it's one of the most powerful poisons you've got, and then you probably should focus on getting your alchemy if you want to use more poisons. Alright, now let's see if I can sneak up on this bear. So, the PC users have a much easier time of sneaking, because basically all they have to do is turn off run and sneak slowly. Yep, you saw me. Alright, let's get this down. <laughs> Pelt is probably the most valuable single thing in the entire dungeon. And we're coming up on the exit here. It's not a very loot heavy dungeon, however, if you're very neurotic about looting everything, then there's about a thousand gold in there. Alright, now we're going to walk with Hadvar down to the Guardian Stones. Because. Wait. I'd like to get some talking in about the way skills are grouped. Also, it's never too early to start Looks gathering like all the blue time. flowers you can but and all the butterfly wings you can because back. they will be a staple of your gameplay if you're doing it Closest anything from River, like what I do. My uncle's the blacksmith there. I'm sure he'd help you out. It's probably best if we split up. Good luck. You see, I wouldn't have made it Blue Mountain Flowers there. and Butterfly Wings are the two most common things that have the shared uh, um, property of Restore Health. And you can make Restore Health potions by the dozen using these. Listen, you should go to Solitude and join up with the Imperial Legion. And really Falkreath Hold, like and this is Falkreath Hold still, has lots and lots the of these blue mountain the flowers. Is the only one can stop now Hadvar said that we probably should split up, but I don't know why they put that line in there. He actually prefers if we stick together. So does Raylov. It's a bunny! Alright, did you notice how when I, the second I drew my daggers, I started sprinting more slowly? The heavier your weapon is, the slower you sprint. Gotcha. Wait, this isn't the Ember Shard Mine tutorial or a walkthrough. Alright, Hadvar's over there. Come on. You didn't run down a bunny. Alright, now skills are grouped These into are the three stones. main groups, under the, the Mage, the Warrior, and the Thief. Each landscape. of these stones corresponds to one Go of those ahead. groups, and it will make those groups, that particular group, a, a level up 20% faster. You can tell which group the skill is in by looking at the um, nebula behind it. See, this one's Green Thief, and the on the right is Blue Mage, and past the blue mage is the warrior. Now we're going to be focusing heavily into three particular skills light armor, sneak, and one-handed. The first perk we get is going to go into sneak. 
Warrior, Mage, Thief. And Hadvar is rather disapproving of anything but the direct approach for combat, so... Yeah, nuts to him. Alright. Now, I'm going to be saving the game, and the next episode is going to pick up right from this save. This has been the Chicken Snipers walkthrough to Unbound, and the explanation for how this series is going to go. Thank you for watching.